So a lot of action happening at the State House in the lame duck session, and Governor J.B. Pritzker already signing some of those bills, as controversial as they are. And then he decided to jet set over to Switzerland, where he's meeting with a bunch of globalists in a public forum, where in the past, at least I've talked about on these airwaves, all kinds of private forums like Bilderberg Group. But uh, you've got the World Economic Forum underway. And uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker actually taking part in one of those uh, forum conversations today. We'll talk about that a lot more later on. But to talk about that and uh, the gun ban that's now in place, where you're going to have to register your firearms with Illinois State Police starting January 1st or face Class 2 felonies. Uh, State Representative Adam Niemerg with us now uh, to talk about this and more. Good morning, Representative. Uh, Let's go ahead and just jump right into it with the gun ban and Governor Pritzker and Attorney General Kwame Raoul saying that if sheriffs don't enforce this, somebody will. Uh, What do you think about all of this and uh, how are you going to act? Well, Greg, thanks for having me on this morning. And uh, folks, thanks for tuning in on an early Tuesday morning. Uh, Last week, we saw the governor, um, you know, with his political narrative of uh, so-called, you know, stopping or trying to stop curb gun violence, which this particular bill will not do that. Gun violence will still occur. They're still not uh, looking at the root cause of it. But uh, yes, the governor signed an unconstitutional uh, gun grab. Uh, This has a very long list of commonly used sporting rifles that will now be banned in the state of Illinois with magazine uh, limit sizes to 12. And yes, just as you said, if you do not register uh, your your commonly used sporting rifle uh, with the Illinois State Police through an affidavit process to where they put that serial number on your FOID card, you are guilty and you are, you are now a felon. A law-abiding citizen is now uh, a felon in the state of Illinois. Um, I think that this law will be uh, challenged fairly quickly. I think that there's a, there, there's a lot to it that is unconstitutional. You look at what uh, Alito and Thomas said just, uh, just the other day about New York's uh, uh, overstretch on, uh, on, on violating the Second Amendment, how they're deeply concerned, how it raises serious Second Amendment questions. So I think in the coming days and weeks, you're going to see uh, several court, uh, court challenges to this unconstitutional uh, bill and like I said previously, this this does nothing uh, to 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 solve gun violence. This just uh, it's a political narrative by the de- by the Democrats and by the governor. So, Representative, uh, you've got a lot of people right now uh, who are who are seeing this, who are hearing about this. Uh, some not realizing all of the aspects of it now in effect because well, you can't go to a gun store and buy a semi-automatic rifle that fits the uh, definition of assault weapon, uh, but police can. Uh, so, I, I talk about I guess what what your your residents, your constituents uh, need to know uh, as of right now, absent any kind of court order. Well, first of all, you know, I, I we have a lot of sheriffs uh, throughout the entire state, a, a, a vast majority of sheriffs and counties. Uh, and then we also have local uh, local counties passing resolutions saying that they're not going to violate folks' Second Amendment rights. They're not going to enforce this. They're not going um, to, to be a part of this uh, this unconstitutional uh, gun grab. So that uh, I, I would say, you know, that that's a very, very, very good thing. Um, you know, what the governor will do, I don't know what he will do. Uh, but I can tell you this, if he tries to use the Illinois State Police to come to my home to take my guns, you know, there's a, <laughs> I'm going to have some very serious issues with that. Um, so I would tell folks just to just honestly to sit tight. We're going to have some court decisions on this that, that will be issued uh, fairly quickly after the lawsuits are filed. So um, what may happen is the lawsuits are filed. They're going to file in federal court from what I understand. Uh, and then there'll be a temporary restraining order and an injunction uh, issued uh, that will that will essentially give it a stay on uh, on these laws being implemented. Um, it looks to me like this will reflect a lot of what happened with the Safety Act. So when the Democrats start to see the the courts rule on this, I would not be surprised if we see a trailer bill or two. So we're we're in it for the long haul. We're in, in it to protect your Second Amendment rights. 
State Representative Adam Niemerg with us on WMAY to talk about that gun ban and registry. And I've got an email here from a listener representative. It says, Greg, what's the big deal about registering a gun in the times we live in with all the crime and shootings, killings, etc.? Is having to hit a few keystrokes on a computer that big of a deal? Question mark. What's your response to somebody who says, hey, it's not a big deal to register guns? It's a very, very big deal for the government to, uh, to to essentially come after your Second Amendment rights. You know, it's it's uh, could be a death by a thousand cuts whenever our, our rights are violated by a tyrannical government. We saw over the last two years things that we never would have thought would have happened. A, a government that was that was out of control during COVID. Uh, so I do not trust the government. I do not expect your listeners to to trust the government. And furthermore, I'd ask, how does violating my Second Amendment, your Second Amendment rights um, in this particular way, stop gun violence. Because, you know, in Cook County, those uh, those criminals, they're not going to register. Uh, they're not going to turn in their magazines. They're not going to register any firearm that, that's on this list. They're going to still, uh, you know, be able to go out and illegally purchase these, uh, these, these, these so-called assault rifles. And furthermore, this bill does not just stop at that. This, under the definitions, under the way that it's drafted, and the way it was it was passed, we're talking about semi-automatic um, shotguns that you sit in a duck blind with. We're talking about Remington 1100s uh, that you just the normal hunting guns. That under the definitions of this bill, if you do not register those firearms, and uh, then you're you're going to be a felon. So those are the, those are the two the two answers I'd give to that question. State Representative Adam Niemerg, uh, let's uh, train our focus away from the guns issue uh, because after the governor signed that last week, and after he expanded abortion uh, with a uh, bill that protects abortion providers in the state of Illinois and even expands who can provide those uh, services of terminating a pregnancy, he then got on a plane and flew over to Davos, Switzerland, where he's taking part in the World Economic Forum and. And he's set to, to um, uh, speak about uh, this this issue, and I've got it pulled up here from the uh, World Economic Forum's annual meeting website, America Unbound. What can we expect from a reshaped legislative landscape in the United States that relates to domestic and foreign policy? He's on stage with uh, not just uh, a, a former um, uh, you know, uh, governor, Brian Kemp, uh, state of Georgia, rather. He's not a former, but he is the governor of the state of Georgia. You've got Joe Manchin, who's part of this, Kristen Sinema, who's part of this conversation. Uh, that's going to be happening at Davos. But a lot of other things they're talking about, including you know how to address what they say is climate change change. Uh, you've got uh, automation of a whole host of things, a lot of push for uh, electric vehicles and such. Uh, what do you what do you take away uh, as a downstate uh, Republican uh, from Governor J.B. Pritzker attending this this forum of uh, leaders from all around the globe, a lot of them uh, from the from the, uh, the 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 space of finance, a lot of them from global governance. Uh, what do you take that uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker is overseas taking part in? Well, Greg, you uh, you said it very well. This is a globalist initiative by a very, very far left governor in the state of Illinois. Uh, folks, this this governor has uh, has presidential aspirations, and he'll drive the car off the leftist cliff any day of the week at the detriment of you, the people, the state of Illinois. This is a billionaire governor who who I'll never be able to relate to. You know, as uh, as I give this interview, uh, I'm in my home. My wife is upstairs trying to get ready for work. She has to get out the door a little bit early. And my kids, I'm, they're trying to get dressed upstairs. I have to get them, get them off to school and head to town and start work myself. Uh, so, you know, we pay, we pay our property taxes. We try to save money. We're trying to figure out how to save for our kids' education. Um, and then you, you throw in the Ameren bills that have, have gone. I, I get folks telling me, you know, it was 200, now it's 1,000, um, and they can't afford this. And you have the burdensome regulations, and you have uh, coal and natural gas and CJA, the Green New Deal for the state of Illinois that was passed uh, last year, that will be, that will be outlawed. And the uh, MISO grid can't handle, um, can't handle distribution of, of, of energy to the people of the state of Illinois. So I would say you have a, so many, so many, and, and folks, Democrat, Republican, I'm upset with globalists on both sides of the aisle. This is about the working class people of the state of Illinois. This is about you and me uh, and this, this, this woke wish list 
uh, that the governor keeps putting out there, whether it's on guns, whether it's on abortion, whether it's on energy, it's hurting the working class of the state of Illinois. So for him to fly his private jet, go over there, sit there with all the, the elite globalists of the world and, and tell us uh, how we should live our lives is, is completely hypocritical. State Representative Adam Niemer, it's all the time we've got. Greatly appreciate you taking it with us, and we'll definitely talk again soon, and I'll see you back down here in Springfield later on this month. Thank you, Greg. Thanks for having me on. It is Springfield's Morning News on WMAY. We've got plenty more to get to.